In this video, I'll be discussing the Kibi flamboyant natural image identity, the body type, the style profile, and at the end, I'll be sharing a sample wardrobe for this type. Hi, I'm Non from My Authentic Style, and this channel is dedicated to helping you find your authentic style. As always, this video assumes you've taken the Kibi Body Types test and you've determined your type to be flamboyant natural. If you haven't, you can go a few videos back where I take you through the test and the video following that where I take you through the answers. Otherwise, your answers should look something like this. Mostly B with some A answers. Some variation is also possible. On the yin-yang scale, the flamboyant natural is third from most yang and is characterized as strong yang with blunt edges. Kibi describes a flamboyant natural style profile as free spirit chic, and that's what we'll be discussing in the coming segments. Before we begin, it's important to note that I'll be discussing celebrities that have either been verified as flamboyant natural or that fit into the typical characterization of that type. With that, every flamboyant natural woman will look slightly different. What you should hold on to is the presence of both blunt elongation, so women who aren't extremely sharp, and width, and that's what makes a flamboyant natural. And now let's discuss the flamboyant natural body type. Height. Moderate to tall, usually five foot five and over, with a long vertical line. There is no lower limit. Body type. Straight and angular, but importantly, these women will have a bone structure that is broad and not sharp, and this is what differentiates them from the dramatic. Arms and legs tend toward musculature. Bust and hips tend to be flat or straight, unless they are overweight. Bone structure. Large and angular with blunt edges broad and square bones, wide shoulders, long arms and legs, large hands and feet, usually somewhat wide, but they may also be narrow, broad or prominent facial contours as seen in the nose, cheeks and jawline. Here, the key thing with the flamboyant natural is what we describe as kibbe with. There is an openness to their features and they are different from the dramatic in that way. The dramatic is long and lean and narrow. If you think of them as a straight line, it's a very thin straight line. The flamboyant natural is a straight line, but it's a thicker straight line, so there's a width to it. And if you wanna understand more on this concept, you can watch my video where I go through all the Kibi terms. The flamboyant natural is characterized by soft yang a long, broad, and blunt structure with muscular flesh. This carries out through to their facial features, which are broad, blunt, and open. Eyes may be very large and open or very straight and small. Lips may be straight and slightly thin, or they might be fuller. Cheeks will be taut, usually, and less overweight. Coloring. Any coloring is possible warm or cool, high contrast or blended. Kibi notes that flamboyant naturals tend to have a skin that either freckles or suntans quite easily. This is obviously directed towards a very specific grouping of women. So take that for yourself if it works. And if it doesn't, I think we can disregard it. Another note here on something like lips will be straight and slightly thin. Again, this doesn't work for everybody. Both these women on the screen are verified flamboyant naturals, and that obviously doesn't apply to Tracy Ellis Ross to the left, but it does apply a little bit to Cindy Crawford. So take everything with a grain of salt and keep in mind the time frame and the limitations of the scope that Kibby was working with when he developed this as we extrapolate it out to women of color and different ethnicities, certain things just aren't going to really resonate. Hair. 
Hair tends towards extreme textures, either very straight and fine or very thick and coarsely wavy or curly. If overweight, the body tends to remain straight as opposed to becoming curvy, and the body tends to become more squarish and stocky. The face becomes fleshy and puffy, and extreme excess weight will collect primarily from the waist down. So most flamboyant naturals are characterized by this very athletic build and a very prominent bone structure. Most will not have a wispy waist, so not curvy to begin with. And as they thicken, that sort of broad midsection becomes even broader to create a very rectangular shape. That is typical, although not everyone will fall into that category. Charlize Theron is pretty typical, as you can see. She's at a very low weight to the left, but her, her frame comes to the forefront and this stays true in all of these images. Here she's at a very low weight. You can see in the middle one, I can see her waist, but it's not very defined. And I would generally describe her shape as being quite rectangular. Luckily for us, she played a role where she had to gain quite a lot of weight. And you can see that as she begins to thicken, all that happens is her body becomes more, it remains rectangular, but it becomes a thicker rectangle. She doesn't suddenly gain curves, for example, and her face does become puffy. And here we have Sierra, who I think displays a slightly different variation of weight gain for this type. Now, notably, she is not verified, but I do think that she falls squarely within that flamboyant natural archetype, right? Here you can see her at her lower or normal weight. She is clearly frame dominant and she always has that musculature. You can see how defined her arms are in that middle picture. So when she gains weight, I see a softening of her legs. So her thigh area starts to become a little bit fleshy and you can see that. But again, I still feel that frame dominance. What's different for Sierra is when she gains even more weight, so at the heavier end of the spectrum for her, she does begin to become more curvy, which is something that we didn't necessarily see with Charlize Theron. So there is a spectrum of how that weight gain can look. And some flamboyant natural types will be more curvy than others. A flamboyant natural will not have a voluptuous body type with a curvy bust and hip line, have an hourglass figure, have a sharp or extremely narrow bone structure, be extremely petite, be symmetrical in body type, have delicate facial features with small or sharp bones, or have exotic facial features. And here are some flamboyant natural verified celebrities. And you can really see the spectrum on display here. Some of these women fall very close to the dramatic characteristics and some of them show more of that athleisure and the broadness that defines the flamboyant natural. And some of them have more curve, but all of them are still flamboyant naturals and you can see that long elongation, that broadness that can be with and that bluntness of the bone structure. Here is a list of verified celebrities in the flamboyant natural category. And now let's discuss flamboyant natural lines. Shape. Bold geometrics with rounded edges. Oversized asymmetrics with rounded edges, rectangles, oblongs, and irregular shapes. The line and silhouette should be unconstructed, bold sweeping lines, elongated and straight, relaxed unconstructed outlines, and a strong vertical and a strong horizontal line. So maintenance on that T silhouette is very important for this type. Here you can see that T silhouette that's so important on display on each of these women in these outfits. First, Charlize has that long vertical with the dress, but on top of it, she has a blazer. And a blazer is such a key cornerstone item for this type because it really broadens the shoulders 
and broadening the shoulder will always be a tick for the T silhouette because it's that top part of that T. So this outfit is a staple sort of sample outfit for any flamboyant natural. Long dress, blazer on top will always work. To the right of that, we have Sierra also in these long sweeping lines. That long coat is a nod again to that T silhouette. It broadens the shoulders, but it also has that length to it. There's a mixing of fabrics and textures and a general relaxed feel to this outfit that leans very natural in nature, which of course will work with the flamboyant natural. At the same time, this feels very polished and chic. So typically these women, those that have a natural essence can carry off very relaxed outfits and on them, it won't look underwhelming. It'll still look very, very polished. And the color palette is also quite relaxed, which just makes that outfit stellar. To the right of that, I have that broad shoulder because of how the sleeves fall in Angelina, but one solid color, a very long vertical line. So again, that T silhouette is in play and she has some waist definition, which is not always um, I think associated with this type, but in the way that it's done here, it works. It's not, I don't feel like it's cutting off her circulation and more importantly, it's not cutting off her vertical. So there's nothing distracting. So it just looks very polished, very put together. And there's that sense of movement, which for me always characterizes this type, a sense of ease, a very natural way of being kind of is what you're going for. Free spirit chic, Kimmy describes it, but just that sense of not too much effort was put in will always be great for this type. Avoid sharp edge geometrics, ornate and intricate shapes, hourglass silhouettes, symmetrical silhouettes, sharply straight lines, intricate, delicate lines, fabrics. Texture in all weights from very light to very heavy. A rough surface is always preferable to a flat surface. Shinier, heavier fabrics are excellent for evening. And daytime sheen should be in texture only. Raw silks and that sort of thing. All fabrics with a certain kind of texture will be great for this type. So leathers, suede, plush fabrics are all excellent. Draped fabrics must be ultra thick and heavy, and knits should be thick, rough, bulky, heavy, or ultra plush. Here you can see sort of the spectrum of the fabrics that a flamboyant natural can look great in, and it's a very wide spectrum. So all weights from the very light to very heavy, some embellishment and some very rough textured fabrics all of these will look great on this type so there's a lot of play that these women have i think what's most important is a consideration to the fabric weight as compared to the person wearing it so these women carry a visual weight because they have that dominant bone structure and that width so when the fabric is too too light looking or too thin or flimsy looking that doesn't look great as we'll see, but otherwise there are so many fabrics that they can play around with as long as that balance is there. Avoid fabrics that are ultra sheer, flimsy, or clingy, right? This dress that Charlize is wearing is too light on her. There, It lacks the visual weight that she has in her structure. Again, with Sierra in that black dress, too flimsy, just doesn't feel like it supports her and there's a disconnect. In the orange dress, it's too tight and clingy. Again, these women require that sense of ease and flow. And in as far, insofar as fabrics and silhouette goes, that means a sense of freedom and some air between the wearer and the dress. So when it's this tight, it completely feels like it's cutting off her circulation. It's just not, great for this type and she feels like she's bulking out of the dress in a way that isn't flattering. Avoid stiff and flat fabrics, tightly woven fabrics, avoid delicate and shiny fabrics. Again, there's just too much ornateness and delicacy here where these women have a structure that is big and bold. 
So that disconnect just makes them look very off in these kinds of outfits and fabrics. Details. Details should be bold, oversized, irregular, asymmetric, and relaxed. Shoulders should be broad and extended, but not particularly sharp. And necklines should be loose and open. So to begin with, let's start with what not to do. This picture is Charlize Theron in a dress that really doesn't do much for her. The long vertical is maintained, so that's a good thing. But the and and she does broaden her shoulder line. So you can argue there's a bit of T silhouette going on, but it's not in a way that we would recommend. The dress has too much of a sharpness and a tailoring and not enough space and flow for her. And the neckline is too high and stiff and it really feels constricting. So this is not in harmony with her best recommendations. Instead, these looks are a lot more harmonious with her. So in the first one, we see that beautiful open neckline, um, this dress with the black and white print. Her shoulders are on display and shoulders on display is really a go-to move for this type. They have amazing broad shoulders. So whenever they can, they should put them on display. In the tuxedo outfit, you can see, again, there's an open neckline, so a sense of freedom, but the tuxedo itself is something that is somewhat restricting, um, but it works on her. There is that elongation and there's a, a broadness and a sharpness to the jacket, but it's not as sharp, I feel, as that first dress. So she can handle that just in the blue dress, it was too much and it really felt constricting on her and felt like not giving her the space required to maneuver. Whereas in this tuxedo, she looks amazing and her structure is carried out in the outfit itself. So there's natural harmony there, but it, there's a sense of relaxedness within it that fits her so well. And of course, in that last dress, that neckline is so open and so relaxed and that'll always look great on this type. There's a little few things I might have changed about that dress but it works on her. Um, it, it really looks beautiful as compared to for example that first dress. So there's a flow in this fabric that that first dress doesn't have and naturally she looks more at home and much better in the flowy dress. Waist should be elongated a job waist is best. A bloused over effect at the waist is also possible. So in these two images, both these women look amazing. In Sierra's case, the skirt is up to her waist, but it doesn't force any kind of waist definition on her. Because the top and the skirt are in the same fabric and color, her vertical line is maintained. And although the skirt does sit at her waist so it gives her beautiful shaping but there is no cutting off effect so it just looks really lovely on her and the shirt is a little bit loose so there's that bloused over effect but it's all very minimally done but she looks amazing in Charlize's case you can see this a little bit more clearly because the top and the bottom are in different fabrics and colors but there's no waist definition whatsoever and there's just a gentle tuck of her sweater into her skirt I think at the bottom so that's a dropped waist and it looks great these women don't ever need any kind of waist definition their bodies don't generally don't have that naturally so it follows that their clothing doesn't require that and in fact when they do that they tend to work against themselves here you can see that both of them are wearing these dresses that have belts at the waist to give them definition but in both cases the belts are not necessary and the belts are really not doing anything except for breaking the long vertical line in Charlize's case the belt is in the same fabric as the dress so you really can't see it and if it wasn't for that buckle I don't even think I would be able to tell that she was wearing a waist belt that's how little it's doing for her and if I removed it, the dress would sit exactly the same. So it's not really hurting the dress, but it's also not adding anything, 
I feel. And in Sierra's case, it actually is hurting the dress. I want to cut that belt off and then just have her have that long vertical line, which again, the belt itself is not giving her any shape. It wouldn't change anything, but she would look a lot more harmonious without it. But this is still okay because it's still within the same colorway, so it's not overly contrasting. And that vertical, I do see the break, but it's not stark. Here you see what happens when these women have a waist belt that really truncates their long vertical line. In both cases, this black belt is juxtaposed against either the yellow dress in Ciara's case or the white dress in Charlize's case. And both times, all it does is cut them off weirdly. It doesn't really add any shaping and it works against them to break their strong vertical line, which as mentioned is the core of their silhouette. So this is not something that I would recommend for this type. Details. Details should be ultra deep long and asymmetrical in shape and their placement should be low on the body preferably from the hips down sleeves should be simple and straight very full and sweeping details should never restrict movement pleats should be soft low and deep and trim should be bold oversized and asymmetrical or clean and minimal here you can see that those gathers in Sierra's skirt. Again, I put this picture here to highlight the placement while not being one of her greatest outfits, but that visual detail and those gathers at the bottom part of her body, it doesn't do anything bad to the outfit. This is really fine. Similarly with the dress that Cameron Diaz is wearing, the white dress, notice how that those gathers, that detail is asymmetrical, first of all, and also begins at her hip and goes down. And it really works beautifully and harmoniously with her. The second image highlights the boldness of detail. So in that collar type of thing that Sierra has on her shoulders, it's very shaggy, it's very big, it's very attention grabbing. And it adds texture to the outfit and it really creates uh, a fun visual interest moment that makes that look more interesting and elevates it in a way that if that was taken away it would really be boring but flamboyant naturals can really handle flamboyant accessorizing and that shows that and in that last case that's jody turner smith who i'm not sure of her type but this dress would work wonderfully on a flamboyant natural so she might be one i just haven't taken the time to sort of break her down but you can see that long vertical is maintained and the dress does flare out a bit which is not ideal but it's not excessive and it has that sense of flow and movement. And then there's that bold neckline, that bold jewelry, chunky piece, and all these pieces work beautifully. So there the detailing is extremely clean and minimal. And that again works for the flamboyant natural. So they can go on either end of the spectrum. They can be very bold and dynamic and lean heavily into the interesting detail or they can go very clean, very minimal. But again, there should be something to focus on and either can work. Avoid sharp tailored detail, severe geometric detail. That seen in this first sort of image, that very sharp cutting in that shirt is not harmonious with Charlize at all. It just stands out. Her lines should be slightly softer than that. and. It also carries out in the pants. Everything is just a little too stiff and too sharp for her. Also avoid small symmetrical detail. That you can see in this third image where she's wearing the skirt and the ruffle top and all that detail in the skirt, that symmetric sort of buttoning is too ornate. It, it's too um, classic in style. It doesn't do anything for this type. And up top, the, the gathers and the bow tie is too frilly and too girly, and it just doesn't work well with her. So these things combined together in one outfit really creates a very fussy look that looks too childish on her. And the look to the left of that, that blue 
cut out dress just has too severe detail. Those cutouts are, there's a lot going on with that dress that I don't understand, but the severity of those cuts and then the bandage feel of the dress and, but then it also flares out at the bottom. The entire style is just not in harmony with Charlize and I would argue with really any flamboyant natural. Um, it's too restrictive because of that bandage style dress, but then it also leans too much on the severity of the edge feel. It, it feels too edgy for her as a person. Now, this is more leaning into her personal essences, but I think it would be the case for most flamboyant naturals. It's too, it feels very much like she's trying too hard. And that's the opposite of the natural feel. Also avoid ornate, intricate detail. You can see that in this look with the black jacket and the blue skirt. That jacket has too much buttoning. Underneath it, there's also the high collar with a very detailed top in the pattern, or perhaps it's the fabric, but there's too much going on. My eyes don't really know where to focus. Also, the lines of that outfit are too short and very geometric on her, and this is just an outfit that would not fit or suit a flamboyant natural, as we can see. And lastly, avoid ornate and intricate detail or animated and cute detail. That dress is too frilly and girly and cute and it just doesn't look right on her add to that there's waist emphasis which as we discussed breaks the vertical line and adds to the list of things that makes that outfit not work separates separates are extremely exciting on the flamboyant natural a mix and match effect is excellent but always be careful to maintain an elongated vertical line with strong shoulders as the basis of your ensemble. Artfully mixing textures is especially effective. Here you can see a mix of patterns, a mix of colors, and a mix of textures that works beautifully on this type. And in each case, the long vertical line is maintained either from a color being up top and bottom in the case of the black outfit that Charlize is wearing, or the shirt being slightly elongated in the outfit Sierra is wearing. And you can also see emphasis on the shoulders in that last outfit with that textured cardigan that Charlize is wearing. Playing around with separates will add visual interest and will just give the outfit a very relaxed and interesting feel that works beautifully for the flamboyant natural. Color. Your use of color should be bold and vivid with rich, vibrant tones. Wild and unusual color combinations express the free spirit energy of this type. Rich neutrals and lush textures work wonderfully for this type as well. Monochromatic schemes tend to be a little bit dull on flamboyant naturals, although you may want to go with one major color that is accentuated by another brighter color. So the flamboyant natural looks great in wonderful use of color. This is a bold and dynamic type of style profile. So really go for it in terms of color combinations and texture combinations. In these outfits, I really like that there is something to focus on, but it also feels a little bit blended. Nothing feels too stark, which I think can be a little bit jarring on this type. Here, I like the black and the brown that's a very nice mix of neutrals and there's a texture to that skirt so this outfit just looks great i don't think the second outfit is necessarily one of Charlize's best but i do like um, how those colors work off of each other there's a repetition of that black color and then that pop of that reddish tone but it's not too stark it still kind of feels cohesive and here is a mix of those neutrals and i just think the colors in this outfit are spectacular here is a use of a very bold color but it's kind of anchored by those accents so it's not just one color worth noting with this particular outfit i wouldn't recommend that everybody go out and find something this vivid to wear it's really important that you understand your personal coloring but within that you can then find the most vivid or bold color that you can wear and 
do something similar and it would be okay for this type. Uh, even for Charlize, I think this color is a little too bright and too stark, but it, it works. It's not too outside of what would be okay for her, but it is very vivid. So that's something that I think you can carry with you. For example, if you compare this blue look to that first black and orangey brown look, I think there's a lot more harmony with her in the first one. But if she's going for a more edgy look like she is in this last one, this bold use of color does help her to achieve that. Avoid multicolored splashes of color. As you can see here, and especially in the second look, there's just too much color going on. And it's also very small and scale is quite important for this type. In that way, the first look is actually more flattering and would work more for a flamboyant natural and for Charlize in general, if she perhaps chose different colors. But in this colorway, it just feels like there's too much going on for her. And in this second look, all that little bits of color everywhere is very disorienting and distracting from, from her. Also avoid monochromatic schemes without vivid accessories. So here you can compare that previous bright bold blue outfit where she had the glasses and the shoes to kind of act as breaks in that monochromatic scheme and gave us something to focus on on her here in this basically head to toe black look there is nothing interesting to look at and it looks very dull on her so there's a lack of color and a lack of interesting pieces to pull the look together and make it interesting there's a little bit of texture but really nothing enough to give what this type requires to make something adequately interesting again with the sierra you see that head to toe brown look is really just so draining on her there's I don't know where to focus on and the dress, the coat, the shoes, and then also her skin tone, everything, there's just too much brown going on and there's not enough visual interest. There's no use of color. There's no accessories that really kind of bring it to life and it feels like it's dragging her down. Prints. Prints should be bold and vivid expressed in abstract geometrics, irregular shaped, or soft edged asymmetrics. They should also have a blended edge as opposed to a sharp edge. Color combinations should be dramatically vivid, but the colors should fade into each other instead of being crisply defined. Wild animal prints, tropical prints, or any highly original motif that is both sophisticated and earthy with a touch of wit, as Kibby says, can be used with ease. Here you can see that at play. These prints look really great on both these women. Sierra is showcasing the animal type prints in both of her looks and it works really great. There's that sharp color contrast in the yellow and black and the irregular patterns of that print in the first dress and it really it doesn't pull attention away from her so she can handle that sort of print and typically flamboyant natural women can. And again, in the last image, there's that cheetah-like print, um, which looks so beautiful, but that outfit also has that mix and match of fabrics. And it's just very interesting to look at it. It's something that a flamboyant natural can recreate because also it has that shoulder detail in the jacket so there's that t silhouette being maintained there's great use of prints there's a mix and match in fabrics so there's a lot of yes ticks to that look and then charlie's in this black and white has that bold color usage but it's not sharp or geometric there's a softness in those lines and how irregular those shapes are Likewise, in both the other prints that she's wearing, the purple and the yellow are really bright against each other, but there's a softness to how they blend, and I think she really looks great in that. And the other one has irregular sort of geometric shapes. The pattern itself is a little bit softer in coloring, but it's pulled together and kind of given structure by the use of that blazer. So there's a lot of things that are done in these looks that just makes them work, and the patterns really work on these women. Avoid. 
sharp geometrics. Here you can see those lines are too sharp and starting with Charlie's, there's just too many right angles and it really makes that not harmonious with her. So comparing this black and white dress she's wearing here to this black and white dress where it's the same colorway, but the way that the lines are softer and more irregular really works here. It's just too sharp and it looks very stock on her. Likewise with Sierra, there's too much ornate detailing here, but that really geometric print, those really sharp triangles and those straight lines just do not work. I, I see the pattern and then I see her. So there isn't that sense of harmony between the garment and the wearer that you want when you're wanting to create a harmonious look. Avoid symmetric prints, avoid watercolor florals. Again, here, there's just a lack of harmony between Charlize and this print. There's a little bit, it's too pastel -y, too soft, too delicate. And that isn't how I would describe her. So she doesn't fuse seamlessly with this print. Avoid small animated prints and intricate or ornate prints. The sweater that Charlize is wearing here, the print on it reads a little bit too small and youthful so it just doesn't work on her it's like she's wearing somebody else's possibly uh, a child's sweater it just it, it lacks a certain maturity that this type calls for likewise sierra's dress is just a little bit too playful and youthful in a way that is not flattering on her and now let's talk kibby flamboyant natural clothes. So David Kibbe has repeatedly said that clothing itself doesn't belong to a specific type, meaning there's no style of garment that is purely for the dramatic or purely for the flamboyant natural. Rather, it's how you put a piece into an entire outfit that makes it appropriate or inappropriate for that type. Let's start with lingerie. For the Femoy Natural, I wanted to preserve that sense of flow that is important for this type, but also a general sense of ease. So pieces that are beautiful and uh, allow for movement and are not restrictive, and while being very beautiful to put on, also give this idea of, I really didn't try that hard. So you can see that in the neutral palette, although color, of course, and patterns are beautiful and important for this type. And you can see it in the detailing of that first piece. And I love that negligee that just kind of allows easy, beautiful movement, but is still so, so beautiful. For swimsuits, I leaned more into the pattern and bold color display that this type is known for. You can see in that zebra-like one piece that is absolutely stunning. And that first image also showcases the athletic build that most of the women of this type have. That could be a great piece to showcase that. And I love this orange one piece. Again, bold, chunky detailing that is just phenomenal for this type. In that final look, you have that beautiful caftan that I think everybody with this body type should have something similar to that. The reason it's so great for a flamboy natural is first, the length. It's very long, but also the lightness of the fabric is very flowy, so it plays into that ease of movement. And then the pattern, that bold leopard print-ish type pattern is so beautiful and bold and dynamic and it also allows for so much color so whatever you it gives you room to really choose different colored swimsuits to go with it and it, it does really all the heavy lifting it's almost like an outfit complete by itself and you can then pair it with whatever you want that I would say is a staple piece for shorts I was looking for something that a has length but also movement. Length because this is one of the yang dominant types. So these women will have a long vertical line. So length just works in harmony with them. And movement because again, that sense of ease and flow is so central to this image identity. For that reason, these women look very wonderful in casual type fabrics. So a linen kind of short like we have up top and denim shorts as well also look wonderful in them. 
Gigi Hadid is someone that I believe is a flamboyant natural and she leans very heavily into these casual or at leisure type styles in her general day-to-day wardrobe so she's always a great example and this is a look that would look great on most flamboyant naturals it's very relaxed but for as casual as it is it somehow doesn't look that toned down on a flamboyant natural i love those white um i believe it's linen i could be wrong but the fabric has that sense of ease and flow and on a flamboyant natural this could be something worn to a formal type of more elevated space and they could pull that off beautifully with a nice flowy shirt with pattern or if they wanted to keep it white with chunky beautiful jewelry there's a lot that could be done the first look showcases more of a formal type of short which depending on your personal style may or may not work but it has the length and um, it's part of a suit and the reason it works beautifully together is because that suit brings in the shoulder definition from the blazer and it gives that t silhouette but in a more fun and funky style so that's really an outfit that could work on a flamboyant natural casual tops the focus is on easy flowy type of fabrics so again that sense of movement those open necklines and open neckline is incredibly important for this type normally they have broad shoulders and prominent collarbones so that's a wonderful way to display it and notice how even the v-necks are not overly sharp that is more of a dramatic feature for the flamboyant natural we add a bit of bluntness so a little bit of softening to those sharp v's as you can see in the middle top there and in the first one we have that kind of boat neck that soft neckline those will always look great on this type blouses should be roomy and full with simple detail and relaxed construction wide and horizontal cuts with clean necklines that are unrestricted are best here you can see these very flurry kind of fabrics and shirts that really have a sense of movement and ease to them I can picture each of these with the shorts we just saw or with a simple pair of jeans and that'll be a wonderful easy outfit for the flamboyant natural of course styled correctly with jewelry and um, perhaps a knit sweater that kind of thing to the bottom right you can see pattern in the shirts and flamboyant naturals look wonderful in a beautiful bold pattern as long as it's not too intricate or sharp or geometric but this one is great Bold color, irregular shape, but the lines are rounded and they, they aren't very sharp. And in the white shirts, I love the length of it, but also notice the ease of the neckline. Nothing too sharp or geometric or constricting. You want to avoid severely tailored blouses, overly fitted blouses, overly ornate blouses with intricate or fussy detail, or anything with high, stiff or constricted necklines. Sweaters should be long, roomy, and boldly cut. Thick, heavy, rough, or ultra plush knits are best. And patterns should be bold and oversized should you be buying a sweater with patterns. Skinny knits should be extremely oversized. And Kimmy notes that all sweaters should have shoulder pads, but that is obviously not a style that is made anymore, really. So what you want to go for is a kind of oversized fit that will kind of create the same effect and again texture is so important for this type i really love that first really chunky sweater with the thick neckline and the large open sleeves and it's just so beautiful i can picture that on a flamboyant natural with an easy pair of jeans and maybe a pair of slides or even sneakers and it would look so so chic on them i also love the long blue sweater to the right with that long line that harmonizes with their long vertical and this is a style that you can just throw over any outfit and it'll elevate it and tie it all together pants should be roomy and full man tailor styles that are slightly wide and relaxed in construction dip pleats full pockets and wide soft cuffs are excellent detail satiny evening pants that are wide and full are also excellent i love these selections because you really get that sense again of just ease and it's elevated, but it's easily elevated. There's no sense of fussiness or trying too hard. And you can really dress this up or down 
I love the long line of it. These pants are long to really harmonize with that long vertical line. And the pants to the right are those satiny feels. So should you need to go to a more elevated event, that really works beautifully to do that while still being easy. I can picture that with one of the loose construction shirts we just saw in the previous couple of slides, and that's a wonderful outfit. You want to avoid sharply tailored and fitted pants or overly draped pants with tapered legs. For denim, there's a selection of uh, three simple pieces. The first one all the way to the right, I like because it's just simple straight leg pair of jeans. And you have to remember the flamboyant natural is very close to the dramatic identity. So some of the things will overlap. And depending on how close that particular flamboyant natural falls, close to that dramatic style. Some flamboyant naturals present very close to dramatic. And so for them, some of the recommendations for the dramatic will actually look wonderful. So that falls in line with the second pair, which is like very skinny, uh, but with a little bit of air, a little bit of bootleg, but not too big, not too wide rather at the bottom. And that first style is just a simple pair of jeans, but that ripped detail gives it an overly casual feel. And casual styles are wonderful on the flamboyant natural. And it also gives it a bit of texture, a little bit of grit, which again, works wonderfully with this type. Jackets should be long, unconstructed and loose. Relaxed cuts with broad padded shoulders are best and the length should be from top of the thigh down. So nothing cropped and simple oversized jeans are best. Large lapels or no lapels very large detail is wonderful for this type, and they also look good in easy double-breasted styles. You want to avoid anything severely tailored, anything symmetrical, anything flouncy or cropped fitted jackets. I love these selections because, again, they give that sense of texture. Denim is a textured fabric. The suede at the bottom and the fur, that's always a wonderful combination. It gives a bold trim, so it's like playing into bold patterns, but still very subdued. And the styles that Gigi has on, who again, I believe is a flamboyant natural who dresses really well for this type. I love that leather jacket, that oversized feel of it. It's just a wonderful staple piece. And the blazer, of course, it is a bit stiff, but uh, depending on how you style it, a blazer is such a staple for this type and she, she looks great. That same sentiment carries out for coats just with adding a bit more length. I love the large lapels and the minimal detailing in most of these. And uh, this type can look great with some cinching or without it. Remember, waist definition is not something that flamboyant naturals generally need. So jackets that don't require that are great. But this is a body type that can present in a lot of different styles. So some people may have a bit more of a curvier figure. And if that's the case, then a jacket that ties at the waist will look wonderful on you. But it's really, it's neither here nor there. And that last jacket, I really love that suede. And for, for the same reasons as I did in the jacket form, it's great in coat form as well. So that length really gives it that wow factor. Skirts should be long and straight, but not severe. Short skirts are also possible and they are fun and funky on this type because they allow you to focus on the long legs that typically this type will have. Slits, pockets, kick pleats, buttons, really any detail is great for this type, but any draping or shirring should be kept low and loose. So from the hips down is where you want to focus your detail and no detail should ever inhibit mobility. Remember, this is all about ease and flow. So nothing that looks like it's keeping you constricted or is making it difficult for you to breathe or walk. It should all just be light and easy. Hemlines should fall at the top of the calf or longer. So this is a long yang dominant type, so long vertical line, and you wanna really keep with that. Unless it's super mini, the skirt should then be really long in keeping with that vertical. You wanna avoid long pencil slim styles, short symmetrical styles, flouncy styles, or smooth and flared type skirts. Dresses should be bold and sweeping. 
broad shoulders and an elongated waist are best, usually a dropped waist. They are relaxed in outline and shape and may be either very narrow and slinky or wide and full. Sharing draping applique, any kind of detailing should be kept low and executed in bold abstract patterns. I love these options because the long slinky types really just work to accentuate that long vertical line of this type and then the texture of this knitted dress the green one texture is always wonderful for this type so it just gives some extra detailing to the dress that's wonderful and it's kind of a blank canvas where then the the jewelry that is so wonderful for femboid naturals can shine and come to the forefront the other slinky type has this leopard print pattern and again pattern so important for this type and notice that cowl neckline it's so easy and unconstructed and open and these types will obviously put to the shoulders of this uh, body type on display which always always a great thing the maxi dress is something that i think na flamboy naturals look great in, especially if it's bold and patented so as you move this dress moves with you and it just really highlights that sense of motion and i think that always looks great in them the waist emphasis on this particular green dress take it or leave it but it can be great on them um and and it's not waist emphasis actually that the reason i like it is because it's right under the the chest area so it's not really singling out a waist it just kind of ties the dress in together but the focus of this particular dress will be how it moves and that's great and that, that deep v that exposes the chest area for an open neckline and again gives um highlights the shoulders i think it's a great dress for this type and similarly with the last one that does have a bit of waist definition but it's not anything too crazy it just gives a nice bit of shaping but long vertical open neckline and that sense of flow and a beautiful pattern. All of these things will be great on this type. You want to avoid flouncy dresses with excessive detail and ornate fussy trim, severely tailored dresses that will be too constricting and overly fitted dresses with crisp or animated detail. For evening wear, all of these things come together. So you want to focus on shoulder emphasis like this piece that rosie's wearing to the left it's cropped yes but it really it works to focus on just her shoulders so it gives her that t silhouette and then the dress underneath it is that long vertical line that long part of the t so that looks great and the mix of textures is wonderful and she's got beautiful detailing beautiful jewelry to focus on so easy necklines, bold prints, glitzy fabric, smooth fabric, minimal detail or bold, broad detail, broad shoulder gowns, evening pants ensembles, long bed jackets with wide leg satin pajama pants like this outfit that Sierra has here. So easy, so relaxed, so chic. This is wonderful for this type. Bare gowns with bold jewelry, evening sarongs evening caftans there's really a lot that this type can do and look wonderful in for elevated or posh events where they need to really step it up now let's talk kiwi fanboy natural accessories fanboy natural accessories should be extremely bold and striking works of art the only rule is that the shapes are always chunky irregularly shaped geometrics with soft edges Bags should be large and unconstructed or large and cleanly tailored. This type also requires that the pieces have firm construction. They can be relaxed, but there should be a sense of fabrics that can hold their own shape. Avoid plain symmetrical bags, small delicate styles and stiffly constructed styles. Also hobo bags are wonderful for this type, but they must have some shaping, nothing that's just going to completely fall apart because structure is a key part of this body type but a relaxed kind of structure. Shoes should be tailored and angular but have soft edges instead of sharp ones so no sharply pointed toes like we would recommend for the dramatic for example. Flats can be clean and simple or man tailored and chunky. Evening sandals should be very bare 
So notice the simplicity of these styles. Everything is kind of clean, but there is a lot of texture. There's suede, there's a little bit of knitted fabric, there's leather, and notice also the rounded toe or the flat toe and the man kind of styles. All of these would be wonderful for this flamboyant natural uh, body type. Avoid overly delicate, strappy, and intricate shoes with trim and plain pumps. Jewelry is one of the most important elements of the look for a flamboyant natural. Pieces should be bold and heavy. Chunky shapes that are thick, rough, or asymmetric are always necessary. Your jewelry should be describable as wearable art. Chunky metal in irregular shapes or soft-edged geometrics. Here I like the colors on display, I like the texture, the bangle to the left or bracelet rather is looks as though it was hand beaten and that kind of feel or that kind of detail is so important for this type. It must kind of look like somebody spent time creating this one of a kind piece for you. Natural stones are wonderful, elemental pieces are great, irregular shapes, nothing too sharp or geometric. You want to avoid delicate antique jewelry, ornate intricate jewelry, sharp edged geometrics, small symmetrical pieces, and you also want to avoid no jewelry looks or minimal looks. Jewelry really ties the looks together and brings the outfits to life for this type. So opting to do away with it will, will create a look that feels rather flat and dull. Hats should be oversized, bold, and unconstructed. Fur hats should be large and shaggy. It's a very interesting detail if you do wear fur hats. But here we have some textured pieces and bold patterning in that brown and white contrasted look. Suede is also great and kind of bare in the detailing. But of course, you can have bolder patterns, brighter colors. But these are just some styles that could work. Belts should be original and unique. Uh, wide belts with extremely bold buckles that feel hand-carved, asymmetric, etc. are possible. Here again, you want that artistic kind of feel. Something that feels unique and one of a kind will be great. But you can also lean into the very simple and bare kind of styles for this type. Flamboyant natural hair should be loose, relaxed and free. A tousled effect is best, so layering is always called for. If you do have hair that's ultra fine or thin or wispy, you look best with a shortish cut that is layered around the face to create the illusion of volume. The outline is geometric, but the edges are softened by the layering. And if your hair is thick, you can really opt for the wilder lines main effect, and but layering is still important. Here, I'll be focusing on Charlize Theron and Sierra, and you can see how beautiful they both look with these kinds of styles. I see the volume, I see the layering, and I see that sense of hair being run through. In Sierra's case, I kind of like it more to the right when it's a little less polished, although she looks great in both, but that sense of ease, again, is so wonderful for this type. And earlier, we saw a picture of Solange Knowles with her big, beautiful afro. That can be leaning into the lines main effect, which if your hair lends itself that way, is a wonderful way to wear it if you are more natural. For the shorter hairstyles, Charlize is a great example. She's, she's styled it asymmetrically. So again, moving away from anything symmetrical, which doesn't work for this type. So a side part will always be better than a middle part. But she's also added a lot of layering and a lot of curl Nothing ornate, just a bit to give it volume, and it looks wonderful. Similarly, in the bottom image there, her hair looks great. Avoid all severe geometrics, blunt edge symmetrical cuts. Here you can see this hair is a little too severe, especially Sierra's look. It's too jagged in the edges. There's too much sharpness, and it really stands out against her. It looks very stark. Similarly, Charlize's hair that blunt 
bang is not the greatest for her. She does look good. I mean, she can pull off, she can pull this off way more than Sierra's look. And she is suited to shorter styles as well. But this kind of cut feels very blunt on her. It's not the best case for her. Avoid boyishly cropped cuts. Again, here you can see that while Charlize can pull off shorter styles, this particular style is not her best. It just falls a bit flat. And in Sierra's case, this hair, this very short, ornate, wispy kind of framing around her face does nothing for her. Actually, it makes her face structure look too severe because of that juxtaposition against how soft and cute the hair is against her her facial features. It just doesn't work. Also want to avoid extremely overly ornate and teased or coiffed hair. Here there is too much ornate detailing in this in these hairstyles and against both women it just doesn't feel harmonious with them. And you also want to avoid extremely artificial shades. That silver hair on Sierra looks very off and that very, very dark jet blackish hair on Charlize doesn't work. It kind of makes her look a little bit ill. So anything too extreme that is flat and one dimensional is not good for these women. You also want to avoid excessive lightening of the hair or anything designed to soften the hair color will be very dull and aging on this body type. Now let's talk about the recommendation to avoid cropped cuts. On Charlize, this, like I mentioned briefly, this is not entirely true. And this is going to depend on each woman and what their particular blend of essence is and how their, their facial structure comes together that is going to determine whether or not this works. Typically speaking, boyish cuts will not look great on a flamboyant natural, but they do work for Charlize. That said, you want to be careful with which styles are best for her. These two, I think, are the styles that she should be avoiding. These are not her best. So she looks good in the short hair, but these particular styles lean a little too boyish. But the minute that she elevates it and she gives it a sense of glamour and it really polishes short hair, that's more harmonious with her and she looks so so beautiful i think she might have a bit of a romantic essence in her as well because high glamour looks stunning on her so all these recommendations should be taken with yourself in mind and not everything will fit perfectly again the recommendation to avoid ornate teased or coiffed hair is true in these cases i think this leans a little too delicate Yes, I said she has some romantic essence in her, but it's not dominant where she can handle this kind of ornate styling. But especially the first two, we get to the third one and it starts to lean into maybe she could, but it, I just don't think it's ideal for her. But the minute she tones it down and it's delicate and ornate, but polished, then she looks great. So again, just find yourself on a spectrum because normally some of these things will will apply or not apply on a spectrum for some people it'll be easy to say don't do this it doesn't work for you but for some people it's sometimes it works for you so knowing where to draw that line becomes important another recommendation is to avoid smooth sleek styles so in the case of Charlize, this is true she is not suited to these sleek flat styles they just don't really work on her she doesn't lean that heavily into the dramatic style of things so sleek smooth styles are a great recommendation for a dramatic type and on her they really just take something away from her they they she loses some glamour something that enlivens her look generally is lost but for sierra this isn't the case she actually looks pretty good in smooth sleek lines she can handle that really well i love that look with the long hair parted down the middle she looks great i don't feel like oh i want to give her some volume or tease her hair that said i do think that if we look at the two looks to the right where she has that sleek pulled back ponytail she looks great but i think she does look more put 
together or, or more like herself, more harmonious in the bottom one where the hair is still sleek, but it, it leans a little bit more softer than the one above. So this is where her, so she's not a dramatic, she is a flamboyant natural because as we soften that smoothness and that sleekness, she does look better and more harmonious, but she definitely can handle that sleek styling. So again, find yourself on the spectrum and know what can and cannot work for you. And every recommendation should be should be tested. Makeup. Flamboyant natural makeup should be strongly contoured in shape, emphasizing strong eyes, strong lips, strong cheekbones, but not overly colorful. You want to emphasize your strong bone structure and features and accentuate your cheekbones with a deep or bright lipstick. So here again, I think it does depend on who we're talking about and how that looks on them. This particular recommendation, I think, is great for Charlize Theron. She really does look great with a more bright lip, for example, more so than I think Sierra does. I think for her, very nude and very subdued kind of makeup is important. But the chiseling, having a very chiseled, contoured effect, I think on Charlize, that top right, it's a little bit too much. I think she looks better when her face is more plain in her makeup with a pop of color like we see in the bottom right. And in that middle where she has a black hair, she looks she looks great, but it feels as though she has a little bit too much makeup on. The lip looks great, but that contouring around her cheeks. So I don't think that recommendation is particularly works with her, but on Sierra it does. So they kind of have this, some of the things work for some of them, some of the time. You want to avoid overly ornate makeup. So here you see when Sierra does that bright lip and also focusing on the eyes, it just becomes too much going on for her. So she's really more of a natural makeup person. That's what suits her best. You also want to avoid overly pastel makeup, especially a too light lip color. It ages you. And this really is the case with Charlize. First, the makeup itself is not great, and then also the hair is too stark, so this entire look just does not work on her. You want to avoid neutrals without a hint of colorful makeup. So here, this is true for Charlize, but not for Sierra. She looks great in that. And no makeup or a minimal makeup effect. Both of them here, I, I feel as though I want to add something to them. Just because it's a natural type doesn't mean that makeup that looks invisible is what's going to be best. They really do look good with visible makeup. It just, depending on who's wearing it, has to be well blended and subdued in the case of Sierra. But color is important for Charlize. So she just looks kind of not well in this look. And Sierra looks incredibly boring. But I do want to highlight how beautiful she looks in this final picture. So for her, neutrals without a hint of colorful makeup is something that does look great on her. I love that. I mean, she has a little bit of coloring to her, but this is a kind of makeup style that would look too boring for Charlize, but Sierra looks wonderful in. So kind of just reiterating what I was saying earlier. With all of that, I hope you are in a position to answer the question, are you a flamboyant natural? If you are, I would love to know about it. So leave me a comment. If you loved this capsule wardrobe that I created for the Flamboyant Natural, I would love to give it to you as a free download. And it's not just clothing. The actual download includes all the wardrobe items, of course, and the accessories, but it also does a breakdown of the Flamboyant Natural body type and the Flamboyant Natural essence. So it's kind of a great document that you can have with all of the information about your body type in one place and i think it's just a, a wonderful thing to have to refer back to as and when you need it if you would like it i will leave the link in the bio and you can move over to that page where you can download that thank you so much for watching till the end i hope this video was helpful to you if you like the content that I'm creating, or if you want to discuss anything I touched on in the video, please do so. Leave me a comment. Also, like the video, and of course, subscribe and turn on those notifications. 
I'll see you on the next one.